What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today's a special one because we're gonna unbox the Aleste Collection, Collector's Edition. This one's for the PS4. It was released for the Switch as well, although I did get a Switch version of this game. It just wasn't the Collector's Edition. Um, yeah, this one's really special. This one's really special for one main reason, and that's because uh, a bunch of old uh, compile or rising uh, employees, or at least a couple of them, got together and they actually made a new GGLS game in 2020. And that's uh, that's pretty that's pretty crazy. And I do believe they actually made the game where it can actually run on an original Game Gear. Uh, check out uh, Shmup Junkie's uh, video on this game. He got copies early. He was able to like review the game and all that. He's got a lot of interesting information, you know, about Compile and Rising. And what's that company they made after uh, they moved over to um, Milestone? I think some of those Milestone games. I don't know a whole lot about that. Although as far as Milestone goes, I will say, you know. Other than Rattergy, I do believe that remix mode on Secura Flamingo Archives, that's like some of the best work I've ever seen done and some of the modern shooters on the Xbox 360, but you know, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother video. But yeah, I knew this was going to be special when it came out. Now, I always want to get collector's editions of these games, like S Parade was the last one from the M2 line of Shot Trigger games that I got the collector's edition for, um, and that was a great collector's edition. Now, this one, not so much. I mean, it's cool. It's cool. But for the price, I mean, you're getting the game in pretty much a Game Gear Micro with the big viewing window. And that big viewing window, when you slap it on that Game Gear Micro, it, it feels like you're going to break the damn thing putting it on there. It's like so tight on the on the game or the little uh, Game Gear Micro. But uh, yeah, so you get uh, you get this little uh, this book. But I got this little book that I got when the Switch version came out. So um, there's actually a book that came out for Kutsu and that got ported to the PS4. There was a book for uh, S. Prade. I got two of them, one for the PS4, one from the Switch. Each came with a book, and a, a book came for both versions of the Aleste collection that came out. And I think that's pretty cool, those little extras, um, because there's not really a manual in these games, but I guess I guess this is its manual. I guess it's like a giant like comic book size thing. I can't read Japanese, so I couldn't tell you, you know, what this thing's talking about. Um but I'm assuming it's, you know, artwork and, you know, different stuff about the game. So, I you know, I think that's pretty cool. At least it's in color, right? So, you know, I can still appreciate it even though I can't read uh, Japanese. Now, let's talk about some of the games that are actually on this collection. There's five, at least that I'm aware of. I don't know if anything's unlockable here. But uh, you got all the GGLS games. You got GGLS, or the Game Gear LS games. You got GGLS 1, GGLS 2. And the, the the main reason why, at least I got this collection, is that GGLS3, um, you know, absolutely amazing. But not only do you have the Game Gear games, you also have uh, the Aleste that released on the MSX, and then you have Power Strike 2. And I do believe, and I think, you know, again, Smup Junkie, I, I think he did a video and, and mentioned this in his video, that uh, Power Strike 2 was exclusive to PAL regions for the, uh, for the Master System. Didn't come out in Japan, and uh, didn't come out... In North America, at least from from what I've been told, uh, from what I've heard or whatever, I think that's uh, pretty interesting. Why a Japanese shooter, a compile shooter at that, would only come out in uh, PAL region? So you know, if you have any information on that, you know, definitely let me know in the comments down below. But uh, here's a, a little art book that actually came with the collector's edition. Uh, this didn't come with the standard edition, but as you can see, that's more uh, more artwork and. You know, I, I dig the anime art style. I've been I've been really getting into a lot of anime lately. Um, mainly stuff like uh, Gunsmith Cats, uh, you know, uh, Miami Guns, which I I can't see any instance of anyone liking Miami Guns other than myself. I, I just dig that over the top crazy voice acting uh, '90s anime. And uh, for for me, it's got to be dubbed. You know, it's got to be dubbed. That over the top voice acting that absolutely does it for me. But yeah, anyway, we just talked about five games that are on this collection. For me, you know, the other games are good. The GGLS 1 and 2. That GGLS 1, I mean, look on eBay. That thing's god-awful expensive. And GGLS 2 is pretty good. I, I do prefer that to the original GGLS. Um, a pretty good game, especially what on the Game Gear. You know, so basically in this collection, you're getting all the 8-bit LS games or all the, uh, the games in the LS series. Now, when I first heard about this collection... You know where my mind went. My mind went to, okay, we're going to Musha, we're going to get uh, Robo Alest and or Robo Aleste for the Sega CD. You're not getting any of that here. So you're not getting a cheap copy of Musha on your PS4 and your Nintendo Switch. And you're not getting Robo Aleste. Now, 
I was talking to Smup Junkie about this, and uh, I hit him up on um, on Twitter. He's uh, to me, he's always going to be Turbo Thunder 16. Okay, that's how that's how I know the guy. When I found out he had a YouTube channel, it's a great YouTube channel. I was uh, I, I just think that that's the coolest thing ever. It's a it's a shooter channel, right? Um, but I was talking to him about this, and he said that maybe they'll do a collection in the future um, with all the 16-bit stuff, and that you know that would be great. So what would that consist of? Okay, if they put out another collection, which I doubt that they will, but if they do, I think it would be incredible because you would get Space Mega Force, uh, that Super Nintendo game that's pretty expensive. Not one that I've ever bought before. only played it through emulation, but Space Mega Force. Uh, you got Musha, which, you know, obviously, if you're watching this video, you're probably aware of, uh, of Musha. God awful expensive Genesis game, but on the Mega Drive that was Super Alest, which I do believe copies of that are a lot, a lot cheaper than you have Robo Alest. So that's what a 16-bit version of that collection would look like. So I'm hopeful for the future, but we'll see. Anyway, let's unbox this uh, this Game Gear Micro. Now I will say, as far as practicality goes, this thing is not practical at all. I don't like the controls on this thing. I don't like how small it is. I do dig it as a collector's item and is is a lot part of the line of the Game Gear Micros. This is the one to buy. This is the one that regardless of what language you speak, you will know how to play this thing. It's nothing but shooters on here and it's all the shooters that are on the collection on this Game Gear Micro. So if you want to play GGLS 3 on a Game Gear, I think this is how the best, the closest thing you'll ever get. Unless maybe, do they have like a like an EverDrive for the Game Gear, because maybe you could take the ROM. I don't know if the ROM was ever even released. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't think you can. I think this is the way you'd have to do it if you want to play GGLS3 on a Game Gear. This is how you'd have to play it, and maybe that's why they give you that that viewing window for this thing. Um, I did try to play with that thing a little while ago, and I like I said, I don't like the way that it snaps on here. It's too snug. It feels like you're going to break the damn thing trying to get that window on and off of this little Game Gear Micro. But, I mean, look at that packaging, though. And it's even got M2 on the packaging for the window. Now, I, I looked on eBay. I looked on eBay. People are selling these windows for, like, 60 and 80 bucks. Um, and this M2 one, I think, is, is awesome that the branding for this collection is actually on that window. But, um... The Game Gears, they're like they're they're selling for uh, like 200, 240. Um, so you know, as far as a collector's item, you know, this is definitely uh, you know where it's at. But other than that, I don't see any practical reason why you would want to own this thing. And as far as a collector's edition as a whole, I'm, I mean, you get the game, yeah, but all you get is this Game Gear Micro. Give me a soundtrack. For me, the game and the soundtrack, those are the that's the heart of a collector's edition, not. A Game Gear Micro, you know, the fact that they actually made this new game, they took former Rising and Compile employees and made this GGLS3, that's like all the more reason to give us a soundtrack. So I think it's kind of weird that they didn't. I'm, I'm, there, there was one in S Parade's uh, Collector's Edition, so why not one in here? And this thing's like double the price of the last Collector's Edition that M2 put out in their uh, Shot Trigger line of games. So... I don't like that. I don't like the fact that if all if, if this thing just had a soundtrack, I wouldn't be bitching right now. But it doesn't, and I don't like that. Um, and one other thing, while I'm at it, while I'm <laughs> while I'm at it, we need a physical of Dang and Fever. And I guess that would be what like Dance Fever in, in Japanese. You know, I'm not sure, but I love that cave game, and it's part of the M2 Shot Trigger line of shooters that they've put out only digitally. That's how I own it. I own it digitally on the PS4. I don't. I don't think there was a Switch version of that shooter, but I absolutely love that shooter. Um, God. So M2, if you're watching, if anyone from M2 is watching this video, please do a physical of Dang and Fever and let them limited run, strictly limited. Let one of them do it. I, you know it would sell. You know I'd buy one. Hell, I'll tell you what. If you do it, I'll buy two copies at least. I'll buy two copies from you. But uh, anyway, here's this Game Gear right here. The screen on this thing looks really good. I dig the screen on this thing. And uh, you know you'll see uh, you'll see some of the gameplay. Uh, the D-pad on this thing isn't the greatest. You know maybe if this thing was like strapped in somewhere, where you could just take your finger and uh, you know like the uh, the Game Gear Micro was like somewhere where you couldn't move it. It was like you know like I said like embedded into a something like maybe a piece of foam or something, and then you could like hold like a piece of foam with this thing in it. Maybe that's an idea of something I could do. But you know the way that it is now, the D-pad is not great. But, you know, you can see, I mean, you can't really see it the greatest, you know, through this, you know, what you're seeing on the screen right now. But it, it looks good. For as small as this screen is, it, it looks uh, pretty good. But 
I guess this thing was meant to be a keychain. I mean, honestly, this thing's meant to be a collector's item. And as a collector's item, like I said, I think this thing is really cool. But as far as like any other reason to own this thing, uh, I do think it's cool. But in, in my heart of hearts, I would really want this to be a soundtrack. I mean, we got the GGLS3. I mean, come on, M2, give us a soundtrack. At least give us the option to buy a soundtrack separately physically you know if there's a digital version of this soundtrack let me know I'd, I'd pay a couple dollars for it download it on my phone it's something i would bump in my car and it's a good soundtrack so whatever but anyway that's the game gear micro and that's the collector's edition as a whole uh oh god i don't want to sound like i'm bitching but 200 bucks and I, if you go and play asia this thing's like over 300 so at that price that's absolutely insane at 200 i think that's too much i got this thing from amazon japan and it was like after shipping like 190 so yeah and that was like i'm pretty sure that was the retail on this so do i recommend that at that price you know not really but i do think it's really cool and so yeah, I recommend the standard edition, you know, get the standard edition for the switch, the PS4 kind of pricey. It's like 70, $71 anywhere you go. But, uh, you know, I do recommend it. And I do think that uh, GGLS three is absolutely incredible. Uh, I can't believe they got former rising and former what, compile employees together to actually make that game. And I guess M2 is the people that actually made that happen. So for that, I'm going to say good job. As far as not having a soundtrack inside your collector's edition, I'm a little disappointed in you, M2. But anyways, guys, that's the Aleste Collection unboxing of the collector's edition. Till next time, peace out.